So I ordered this on Amazon for, I think, £27.95. And Amazon actually said, you know, it was going to take a short while for it to be delivered. Well, they kind of underestimated that. It took four months. So basically, this is just turned up out of the blue almost, you know, just now. And as you can see, unfortunately, on the front of the box, it's actually got, like, postal details on, which I've had to blur out, obviously. So what I'll do now, I'm just going to go through each side of the box. I'll hold the shots for, like, five seconds. So if you need to read it, just pause and then read through it and then carry on. Okay, so the paperwork that comes in the box is a Japanese manual, a Chinese manual, and a multilingual manual, which consists of English, Spanish, French, German, and Portuguese. And then also a nice little Behringer sticker for you to stick on all kinds of things you would like to stick a Behringer sticker on. Now, I'm not going to go through these manuals. It'll just take too long. But as you can see, they're the languages on the manuals that come with it. Also in the package, you get a USB cable so that you can connect your interface directly to your computer via USB. So let me just struggle to open this. So there we go. So that's just a standard USB connection cable. So looking down at the top of the unit, the first thing we've got here is a rotary control, which alters the input level for channel one, which is either a mic or a line input. And next to that is another rotary control, as we can see. And this one simply does the exact same job, but for the second input, which is instrument gain two. And then the last control on the interface, as we're looking down here, is another rotary controller. And this one alters the volume for the headphone and the master stereo output. Looking left to right on the front of the unit, the first thing we've got is the mic line input one. And basically what this is, it's a multi-purpose or a dual-purpose input socket. And that's a socket that can take a quarter-inch jack or an XLR as well. So you can plug a microphone in or you can plug a line-level device on quarter-inch. Then next to that, we've got our signal indicator for input one. And above it, we've got a clip-level light as well to let you know if you're clipping the input on input one. Next to that, we've got instrument two or line into. And what that is, it's another quarter inch jack input. So basically you can plug in any kind of line level device into there as well. And next to input number two, we've once again got a signal indicator to show us our signal coming in. And above that, we have got a clip light to also let us know if we are clipping. And that input is on a quarter inch jack. And next along is the direct monitor button. And what that is, that's just a button where when you switch it in, it will route the input from one and two directly to the headphone socket or the outputs on the back, thereby eliminating latency whilst you're monitoring during recording. And next to that, we've got two LED indicators, one on the top for power, and then the one below that for 48 volt phantom power when that's switched on. And the last thing on the front is a quarter inch stereo jack socket and that's for your headphone monitoring. And once again from left to right but on the back what we've got are two RCA phono sockets which are your left and right or your two channels of output. And next to that is the USB socket and what that is for is to connect into your computer so that you can communicate with the audio software that you're using and also to power the device. So as you can see, it doesn't use any external power supply, but rather it takes its power straight over the USB cable. And to the right of that at the top is a Kensington lock socket, so you can attach a Kensington lock to the system. 
And to round things up for the rear of the unit, we have got a 48 volt phantom power switch. And what that is for is for switching off and on phantom power, which is sent down the XLR socket on the front to power condenser microphones or any other microphone that requires 48 volt phantom power. Okay, so that concludes the quick unboxing for the interface. And from here on in, I'll be doing some regular updates over this interface, comparing it to other interfaces I've got and preamps, and also trying a number of different microphones on it in different configurations. And the last thing that remains for me to say right now is thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.